Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial of our foundation level sample paper discussions. Uh, we are in set C, completed the questions on the chapter one and now stepping into the chapter two to talk about some of the interesting questions from this particular chapter as well as a part of this particular set. Uh, just a quick reminder that chapter two has five questions out of 40 in the examination and equally the chapter three will also contribute with five questions but let's have a look on some of the questions today and uh, try understanding what could be the best complicated way the examination can throw you some questions and uh, you should be confident enough to answer and respond to them so the next question <clears throat> we are looking at is question number nine you are running a performance test with the objective of finding possible network bottlenecks in interfaces between components of a system. Which of the following statement describes this test? Now, uh, we certainly remember and recall that uh, none of the non-functional levels were covered as a part of chapter two, but they gave us a quick introduction between uh, doing a quick comparison between functional and non-functional testing, where they just gave us a quick name of few levels that what is non-functional could be all about that called as security performance usability etc right so do not be confused that this question was no longer in the syllabus or we never discussed about performance testing and so because here they are not talking about performance testing at all they are talking about non-functional testing and just using one of the example to ask you a question right so don't be under the impression that uh, we never covered these things in our tutorials or in the syllabus. How come we are being asked about performance testing, right? So that's not the case here. We're talking about the comparison between the functional and non-functional, which we covered as a part of 2.3 in our syllabus. So <clears throat> which of the following statement describes this test? Number one, A says a functional test during the integration test level. Nope. Performance testing is not a functional level. It's a non-functional level. If you look at B then, it says a non-functional test during the integration test level. Okay, it is a non-functional testing. And uh, if the scenario you look at, it says that the objective is to find possible network bottlenecks in interfaces between the components. Interfaces between the components is CIT, which is one of the sub of integration testing. So yes. This is non-functional testing being conducted during integration test level. Don't be driven by the components, right? Because component testing is just solely about components, but not interfaces between them. When you say interfaces between them, it is component integration testing, which is a part of integration testing. So B looks quite good, but let us look at the other options as well. Like C says a functional test during component test level it's not a functional test not even component test level right and d a non-functional test during component test level that's where it makes it clear that the right answer is b a non-functional test during integration test level is being conducted in this scenario performance testing justifies the word non-functional testing and the interfaces between the components is talking about CIT, component integration testing, which happens as a part of integration test level. Let's look at the next question here, the question number 10, which is talking about which of the following statement is true. Now here, there's nothing in the question. All you have to do is look at the options and uh, come to the conclusion, right? Because here we just have to look at the false part of it. A, impact analysis is useful for confirmation testing during maintenance testing. Uh, number one thing here to understand that the confirmation testing is all about uh, retesting, that is running a test once again to make sure that defect is now resolved. And maintenance testing does not talk about confirmation or fixes of defects. It's more of, a, more of related to update, upgrades, migration, etc. So that's nothing to do with the relationship of impact analysis that to with confirmation during maintenance b confirmation testing is useful for regression testing during system design again a very contradicting statement you can very well make out we're talking about confirmation testing is useful for regression now there are two independent things they are related to change but done for a different purposes 
Rep confirmation testing is to talk about whether the bug is fixed or not. And if you talk about regression testing, it is to more, more, more make sure that if this particular change happens, then whether it has any side effects on the existing body of it or not. So it does not help each other at all. And that to not during system design, which is pretty much much, much earlier in the life cycle. C, impact analysis is useful for regression testing during maintenance testing. Exactly true. Because when you talk about impact analysis, it helps you to minimize your effort on regression testing by letting you know that what are the areas which will be impacted by the change so that you can run limited number of tests as a part of your regression testing, reducing your effort on the regression. Coming to D, confirmation testing is useful for impact analysis during maintenance testing. Uh, it's just like, you know, making it other way around as A. If you look at A and D, they just turned around a few of the words, but the statement remains the same. So pretty much not to be uh, picked up as the right answer there, right? So putting up all together here, the right answer is C, impact analysis is useful for regression testing during the maintenance testing, where it helps you to reduce your effort while getting the details of the impact due to a change. Jumping into the last question for today, that is question number 11. Consider the following types of defects that a test level might focus on. Uh, so we have got four defects or types of defects here. Number one, defects in separately testable modules or objects related to components. Two, not focused on identifying defects. Okay. Uh, three, defects in interfaces and interactions. Number four, defects in the whole test object. Which of the following list correctly matches the test levels from the foundation syllabus with the defect focus options given if above? So I think, uh, again, it's more of like driven by the options with the given content on the top. So all you need to do is the types of defects that a test level might focus on. So you need to relate here and understand how exactly each level will cater these issues, right? So if you talk about number one, defects in separately testable modules or objectives. When you say the words separate or independently testable modules or objects, it's it's all about component testing or unit testing, which always test a particular unit independent of each other. So one obviously goes to component. Uh, that's where we can decide and filter out and minimize our effort on the option. We got just B and C with us to take care of. Number two, not focused on identifying defects. Yes, acceptance testing is more about uh, understanding that if the system is meeting the expectations of the business or the customer needs, rather than finding defects. The primary objective of alpha and beta is to make sure how far the system which is built is meeting the expectations of the customer and the business. And that's what most important thing as an objective of acceptance. That's where, yes, acceptance testing does not focus on identifying defects. Uh, coming to the next, which is uh, number three, defects in interfaces and interaction. Of course, it's all about integration. Interfaces interaction is also called as integration. You remember this from our discussion in the tutorial. So three goes to system testing. And I think at this point, you should have got your right answer, but still let's hit the uh, last statement, defects in the whole test object, which is whole. The word, the moment you talk about the whole, it's, it's like system which you are creating. And of course, the number four goes to system testing, which meets uh, the you know level where we will be validating that as a standalone system. So that's pretty much to understand how exactly to deal with such questions and putting it up all together. The right answer here is C, one is equal to component test, two is equal to acceptance test, three is equal to integration test, four is equal to system test. Pretty much straightforward. Sometimes your options will help you decide on the right answer and you don't have to put a lot of effort as well. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.